Hey guys, Harry here, back again with another Brit Lane vlog as usual. Uh, this is the second of three clips, uh, me finishing off the uh, heavy block cut up. Enjoying a nice Budweiser tonight. And uh, just going over, I don't know what topic to talk about today to be honest. Um, I'm just going to talk about a few things I've uh, been doing over the last couple of days and yeah yeah not really much to talk about when it comes to blocks i've been looking into got a couple of comments about the fitzbrick clamp uh guys saying that it's pretty good and I've, I've been looking into it a bit more detail and i know it's 35 quid and you know for a cheap ass like me looking at something for costing 35 quid i'm thinking it's price of a troll but <laughs> uh it, it does look like a good piece of kit it's like a you know ergonomic tingle slash you know line stringer which you can just clamp to anything uh, ideal for rack backs which i'm very uh, fond of obviously a big avid corner builder uh you know internal corners they're good for you can clamp them onto like you know if you're uh, doing a bit of toothing out been known to do my fair share of toothing in my time uh once did a garage and then uh, because the scaffold were covering both of the pillars End up toothing out about 22 course of brick or straight up with a profile. Uh, management weren't very happy about that, but you know, needs must at the time, you know what I mean? You gotta do what you gotta do. End up having to take a little bit of it down and rack it back. And yeah, a little story there for some of my, uh, some of my less finer moments that I've done. But yeah, uh, been looking into the Fitz Brick Clamp a bit more. And, you know, the only concern I have about the Fitzbrick clump is the uh, ability to tie your line on to the, uh, you know, the clump device. Which, I've seen them doing videos, it was really simple, but it's always one of them things that even myself, who's very open-minded when it comes to trying new methods, you know, still you're really sceptical about trying new things. That fucking age-old dinosaur mentality that those Brit layers have is just, it's just ingrained and you don't want to fucking... Uh, you know, you don't want to adapt, but it's something that I'm gonna gonna purchase next week. I think. Uh, obviously, I've got this. I, you know, as you know, as a young father, I'm a young father, should I say? I'm uh, 26 next month, and uh, you know, I have this guilt. I, I have this fucking you know guilt spending uh, complex where if I spend some money on myself, I feel guilty. Like I should only be spending it on kids and misses, you know, but. Gonna get me sent a little uh, fist brick clamp. Uh, yeah, I've been looking also at these uh, the Marshall Town nine inch London pattern trowels. Obviously, uh, recently traded uh, me my Tizak ten inch with short handle, which was which I basically tricked myself into thinking I liked, even though it was a complete pain in ass to use. And which a good nice blade on it, but stiff as a board, and handle was just getting on my tits. Ended up trading that. Um, well, I ended up giving that to my dad, and then he traded it with one of my mates on site, who, who's like, you know, fucking obsessed with collecting trowels, and he's got tons of them. So he, he traded this basically same brand I've got, Marshall Town Philadelphia 10 inch, which had a bit of wear on, a bit more than uh, a bit more wear than I thought it had, but it's, uh, it's still I think better steel than the Tizak, and uh, it was uh, you know. It's one of them things, I've been looking at different trowels, but I'm pretty happy with the Philadelphia at the moment, but I'm sort of wanting to try having a go with London pattern again, just just because it's trendy, isn't it, at the moment, everyone uses London pattern, you, you know, in America, all Americans use London pattern because it says London, it's like they don't want to use the same same pattern as uh, basically in, in, in the States where they're from, Philadelphia, but uh, it seems it's just more popular using London pattern in America and over here we're more popular using Philadelphia pattern. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I've been currently, if you can see in left hand corner, uh, currently transitioned to using, well, carrying a bin round from site to site with me. Uh, you know, it's one of the uh, one of the bins I acquired on one of jobs. You know, plastic bins are good, but they take up a hell of a lot of fucking space in your car, so... Uh, <laughs> trying to shove that into my Renault Capture was pretty fucking uh, pretty funny and uh, you know it does elevate the board it's nice to stick around but I'm thinking about getting a bit of either CLS or Tyler's Lack because I've got a circular saw 
which I sort of borrow off my dad. And because uh, he's, he's another one who collects tools and just don't really use half of them. And uh, I might knock my send together with, with an impact driver and some screws, a you know, a bit of a few wooden tables just to take around with because they've got metal tables uh, on online. Some of the Renetti ones, I think they're called, they're called Renetti or something, blue, blue tables. Uh, you know, they're pretty good, they look pretty good. But for 29 quid, it's like buying like three trowels and leaving them, you know, lay next to your wall. So might knock some up with some timber. Um, it'd be just like carrying another few profiles around with me because I only need about three. Because at the moment, I'm, I'm max, I was working on five boards today. I was building that garage, as I said, I was going to go on to, uh, which I got on to finally after finishing this. Um, and we end up getting pretty getting to work at like quarter to nine, half eight, well, on two at days. And because uh, it were a smaller job, uh, we had ready mix come in and one at days it didn't turn up and uh, until like 11 o'clock. And then the other day, fucking, it couldn't get to my bricks because of all the plant. And, uh, and yeah, you know, uh, so I managed to get on that garage and get, you know, I've made some progress today, got one, one at Gables up. And tomorrow I'm going to try the super day and smash it. Um, I've been sort of working a bit, you know, sort of getting there a bit later and then working till about four on average. I'm sort of liking the sort of the, the solid half, half eight arrival and the uh, four o'clock finish. It works pretty well. I find I find that it less, it more chill, really, because obviously because of lockdown restrictions easing and traffic up in. We're setting off at like half seven. And it's taking us an hour to get anywhere, really. So the half seven, one, half eight travel time along with the... Um, with a bit of a later start to be honest but I, I, I kind of like I'm kind of liking it it's uh I'm a bit you know if I get there too early I feel knackered to, you know by one o'clock in day I'm absolutely cream crackered so I uh I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try a little bit of an earlier one tomorrow try to get there half seven like rest of it lads because I've got my ready mix sat right next to my wall and about uh about 600 and odd, 600 and odd bricks ready there of facings and I've got like three course of banding bricks already there I've seen everything snapped, uh, and uh, we'll have a go. Try this, you know. Try the the full half seven, one half four experience. But I don't know whether I'll do. I'll make it like because I normally get to, especially on a Friday, I get to like three o'clock, and motivation just flies out of me, and I can't be bothered to carry on. But um, it's a, I'm actually doing a cavity garage actually. Uh, a well, it's not a cavity; it's a double skin garage with a block block inside. So brickwork don't need to be pointed on the inside which is amazing um it's got some funky detail for three course uh right all the way around it which is no big deal it's pretty easy to do and uh and just you know nice stiff one of my nice stiff brushes i've got brush up joints off at back obviously it tie wires in standard block course like you would in the house and yeah flying away in it but yeah so tables gonna give them a knock up i think with the impact driver, I'm going to try to uh, screw some together, you know, make some at the, at the weekend. Maybe not this weekend, maybe in a couple of weekends. Probably want to get back on a bigger job where they waste up wood and a little bit in skips. I'll get, I'll just grab a load out and shove a few lengths into my dad's car. And then I'll uh, take the handsaw home and I've got some uh, plastic trestles at home. So I'm going to just knock some tables up. I think we have a nice bolt, bolt and washer combo through the middle. Uh, yeah. Should be pretty good. Hopefully they work out well. Don't have to keep carrying dust dustbin around with me, which is quite happy. It's quite you know nice to have the dustbin to like shove all your brick clamps in, all your profile clamps, everything like that. And uh, it's uh, yeah, it's nice to have a nice little dustbin wheel. You can sh shove all your shit in it, shovel and everything, carry it down ladder. Uh, so anyway, you can see me doing this cut up. Obviously cutting blocks with the uh, with the hammer and bolster. You know, not it's not the neatest job, but it's you know it's adequate for what the uh, job entailed. Also, uh, if you could see me putting little pieces in, um, and like putting some funky, funky setup as it comes to the peak, they'd they'd put the wood encroaching onto the cut up, and I didn't have a wood saw with me, and uh, it was a good ten minute, you know, a good ten minute round, ten fifteen minute round trip to the car, so we just decided to uh, cut my blocks around it and do some funky gobbo action around it, make it look nice. But obviously, my dad went back at wall. Um, jointing up after this and uh, he makes a fucking stellar job but he jointing it makes anything look good to be honest so could be worse bricklayer at well if my dad had met me met your bricklaying would look good 
Yeah, sorry about that. I had to cut it off. Uh, I'll add started having a bit of a scream out on me. Uh, oh, he's back again. Hold on. Let me have a listen. Yeah, he's having a, he's having a bit of a bad day today. He's screaming all day for, for missus. But anyway, the um, my old man as well. If you could, I don't know if you're able to see in this clip, maybe on the last one, that... Um, what we do on these cut-ups, depending on even if it's a, a block and brick cut-up, uh, especially if we use it cell cons, because obviously they, they waft around like hell. But we, we normally get a little bit of timber, obviously joiners leave loads around. And uh, we just pick some of that up and we just clamp it, put a nail each side of the block through timber. So we're obviously putting it on as if you're doing like a, like a streamline cut-up. And we just clamp it, we get a few, you know, four inch nails, bang them all the way through wood. And just hold the cut up skin steady it just makes a better job overall you know you're building if you put about three on each side as you as you're going up the old man does it loves it using the uh the old uh, hammer and nails as it used to be a joiner years ago and uh it puts them on and literally your skin holds solid and you're not having just that waft effect when you put wall when you put your uh, level up the wall you know go to plummet and the whole thing fucking rocks and you don't even plummet anyway it just rocked your wall around so it's a great thing to do, stabilise the cut up all the way up, nail into the timber, straight across, nail each side of the nail, you know, obviously four inch apart, clamp it with clamp it to the uh to the truss and you're laughing. So yeah. But um yep, yeah, coming coming week in the coming next week I'm gonna get some of these fixed brick clamps, as I said before, give them a try. Um Currently to switch line again, obviously I made that video about me using rolls on line about how cheap it was. Yeah, it's fucking absolutely cheap as chips and rubbish. Yeah, got rid of that. Um, it's just, I've, I've, cha I've changed it like twice in about three months and this it's, you know, it's flat, you know, it's fraying already. It almost snapped the other day and I was just sick of it. Don't get rolls on line. It's no good. I, get, I did a review on it because it, you know, it was, it was decent for price to get you a few days worth of brick laying but I finally got some spear and jackson lines and uh, some rubber corner blocks with them uh, the lines were uh, just I used to like to use green lines because it's the uh, furthest color you know, it's the most contrasting color to bricks and my I'm, my eyesight ain't great I've got a lazy eye and one of my good eyes that's failing as well so I'm blurry as fucking one eye and then the other eye is starting to get blurry so uh I like to get something nice and fluorescent, and I can see it, because uh, I'm I'm like I'm short sighted, so I can see close close in when I'm laying. But if I stand back, it's a bit blurry. So uh, if you've seen a few of my videos, I wear glasses, and I've sort of gave up buying prescription glasses now because I just kept scratching them on sight. I just kept you know losing them. So I might end up getting another prescription. It's about you know forty quid. It's about. 25 quid for two pairs so i might try get them again see if i can use them on site again but i found my eyesight's getting better not using my glasses so uh, to be honest i'm trying to stay off of them i just use them when i'm sat back in my bed gaming or watching a film with missus so it's uh just what things you gotta bear in mind if you're wearing glasses on site they're gonna get scratched up to fuck so uh yeah yeah what else we're gonna mention one more thing Oh yeah, on the garage. Obviously, I found out that which I finally got on. I've had about, I've had about a day in, a day and a quarter on it so far. Uh, I mean, use it profile setup to be honest. Because we've not got a pillar at the front, it's just a two brick return. Uh, I've put set press set profile each side, and because we're not going to join the back of the brickwork, it's less jointing overall, so I can do it all easily. Um, and obviously all man can help out as well so you know i don't have to break off as much so i've just been smashing it in between two profiles i did a i did a nine course rack back nine course tail out with big level and uh yeah because it, it was set up the way we had to lap the damp up on two because we put a four inch when you start off and then they wanted to lap the damp from the concrete floor over the brickwork after two course for your 150 splash so we ended up using profiles. So I was going to build a corner, but I just, just uh, use profiles. And I think overall, uh, it is slightly faster using profiles. Uh, I, I faffed around a bit because the footing, whoever done footing was, uh, it was a bit out, you know, it's only like four or five cores of bricks. 
<laughs> above the footing, above the trench block, and they were fucking miles out of plumb. I had to wedge the metal part of the fucking F clamp behind profile to get it plumb. <laughs> and then when I was tailing out my corner, I checking it with T square, making sure it was still square. Uh, but yeah, I got it up today, up to 18 course, because I was stood on up up, on my little milk crate up up, and uh, and even then I was I was reaching my tits off to get 18 course. So this side that I'm going on to tomorrow, I'm a lot a lot you know there's a lot. Uh, I'm only two course off at soil, so I should be able to reach 18 with no sweat at all. So so yeah. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I've just putting a bit of picture of bit of bit of the cut up finished product obviously i haven't finished it yet there'll be another video uh you know next week of me well tomorrow of me finishing it off so well this is a little picture i got from the other day so anyway guys thanks all for watching i'll see you in tomorrow's video